getting paid to write from the comfort of your own home. Today's episode is brought to you by Writing Jobs. When you want to get paid for the words you write, the best place to turn to and the place I always go is Writing Jobs. To find out what they have available today to get you paid this week, go to servenomaster.com backslash writing jobs. Are you tired of dealing with your boss? Do you feel underpaid and underappreciated? If you want to make it online, fire your boss and start living your retirement dreams now, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Serve No Master Podcast, where you'll learn how to open new revenue streams and make money while you sleep. Presented live from a tropical island in the South Pacific by best-selling author, Jonathan Green. Now, here's your host. One of the main ways that I drive income into my business is by writing. Writing happens to be my passion, something I love to do, and it's one of my favorite ways to express myself. Just this morning, I wrote 5,000 words in a book for a project I'm doing for one of my clients, and I am involved in a myriad of different writing projects. I write books for myself. I put books on Amazon, just like uh, my book, Serve No Master, which is on Amazon now. That's one type of project I do. I also write books and put out books under pen names. I have books in romance category, I have books about parenting, I have books about personal development, I have a lot of my own stuff that I run through Amazon and kind of sell books that way. I also have books that I run through publishers in direct response marketing. And then I ghostwrite for different types of projects. So I'm very involved in all the different ways you can make money from writing and I want to show you how you can develop the same skill and make money the same way. The internet is driven by the need for content. Any website you like, think about any of the blogs you go to, websites you read, news websites. They need new content every day. Nobody wants to read yesterday's news. The news website that I go to, they have new stories every couple of hours. So that means I come back every couple of hours. When you have a website that has a new blog post once a week, well, people only visit it once a week. If it has a new blog post every day, their customers will visit once a day. But if they have several throughout the day, well, then people will keep coming back. So you can turn one visit a week into seven visits a week or 21 or 30 visits a week, you can really increase your traffic numbers, which massively increases your profitability. So as much as websites are driven by the desire to bring in new visitors, they also want their existing visitors to come back more and more. The way Google ranks websites, newness is very important. New content is very important. When a website is static, when there's no new information, no new blog posts, no new data, nothing's changing, well, then it starts to decay, and its rankings can often drop. So they'll start to see less and less new traffic as well. So for these two main reasons, the fact that you need lots of new content to get new traffic, and they need lots of new content to get repeat traffic, that's why people who own websites are always hiring more and more writers and people who write blog posts. And in fact, the going rate right now for writing a blog post is pretty good. You can get paid 30 to $35 for writing a single blog post. And when you learn some of the writing methods that I'm going to share with you throughout this course, and I talk about them in my books and on my website as well, well, then you can write very quickly. You can write one of those blog posts in 30 minutes. You don't need any specialized training. You don't need to be super smart. You don't even actually have to know how to spell very well. Because these days, Word or any word processing software will autocorrect most of your spelling mistakes and will really help you with that stuff. So we have self software and technology to really help make up for those types of things. And as you get into writing, you'll get better. Once it becomes your craft and once you realize you can make $70 an hour writing blog posts, you'll start to take this very seriously. So let's say your goal. You've established your goal right now. You want to make an extra $1,000 a month. For every three blog posts you write, you get $100. That means you need to write 30 blog posts a month. It's one a day. You write one blog post a day for someone else and you've hit your financial goal. That's how we can quickly hit our first goals, by realizing the power of ghostwriting. Now, there are certain services you can go through where you kind of have a middleman. And in the notes for this episode, I'll provide you with tons of links below. But there are services where they're kind of in the middle and they give you jobs and you get paid per article. The challenge with working with one of those is that you lose part of your commission. So instead of getting something around four cents a word, you'll get around two cents a word. It cuts your paycheck in half. 
So now for that same blog post, you might get 15 or $17. So you do have to do more work that way. You can take advantage of that type of work to build up your portfolio, though. So if you have no idea how to get clients, you've never written an article for anyone else before, you can start off working for those services. And there's a couple of them that are like called Text Writer and iWriter. I forget all the names because they're kind of changing. There's a couple of them around for a few years. Uh, what you do is you start working for them just so you're getting steady work. And once you've written 10 or 20 articles, you save copies of those articles. Then when you approach a client directly or someone who posts an ad looking for someone to write for them, you can say, here's examples of what I've written before. So that way, instead of just writing a portfolio for no reason, you've actually been paid to create your portfolio. It's very important to start off with a portfolio because otherwise you'll never get any work. No one's going to hire you if you say, hey, I'm a great writer. Can I see something you've written? Oh, I haven't written anything yet, right? Sometimes people, uh, I talk to people about jobs. I was recently talking to someone, actually, about a copywriting job. I said, hey, I know someone who's looking for a full-time copywriter. And they're willing to pay the kind of money that you're looking for. I asked this uh, friend of mine, one, uh, someone I've been working with, I said, how much money do you want to make per month? And he told me his number. He goes, this is my goal. And I said, fine. I talked to my other friend. I said, hey, if you're looking for a full-time copywriter, this is a salary of some, someone I know is looking for. And then I, I said, I need to see your best work. What's your portfolio? And unfortunately, his portfolio wasn't really assembled. He hasn't put it together properly to where it's just a zip file of like four or five different sales letters. He's written with numbers and stuff. So I'm still going to try and connect him with the job, but the possibility of kind of it working out, it's kind of gone down a little bit. And that's what happens when you don't have a portfolio tight. So I really recommend that you have examples that you can show people because if someone says to me, hey, can I see an example of your writing? I say, what do you want to see? Do you want to see something I've written about health? Do you want to see something I've written about dating for men, dating for women, something I've written about, uh, oh, prepping I've written about, right? People, there's a lot of stuff like right wing and the world preparation. I've written emails, blog posts, and some sales materials in that industry. So whatever industry someone's from, that's what they want to see, right? If, if someone says to me, hey, I need someone to write, uh, a couple of blog posts about long distance dating. I go, great. Here's an example of me writing a review of the new iPad. It doesn't make any sense. Just because you can write about one thing doesn't mean you can write about something else. So the great thing about taking these low paying jobs to start off is that you'll get the most random of projects. So it'll give you a wide spectrum of industries and topics to write about and it will start to expand you. And you'll start to write about things you've never written about before. Now, as you build up a little bit of portfolio, then you can start posting ads on different websites. There's a couple of uh, forums and different websites where people just post ads for content writers. And you can start off, again, with a lower price point. Okay, so maybe working for a service, you're getting two cents a word. So you offer, say, hey, I'll do a discount and I'll write for three cents a word. You hire me through someone else, it's four cents a word, but now you get a discount. Just the fact that you're a native English speaker means that you'll get offered a higher number. Whenever I get an article that was written by someone whose second language is English, I can always kind of tell Especially because I taught English for a very long time. I taught English as a foreign language around the world. I can kind of feel when someone's making mistakes for idioms or some of their sentences have a little bit of a weird structure. And I notice those mistakes and those affect the value of the article. So just by being a native English speaker, the amount you could charge goes up. Now, if you graduated high school, you can add that. High school graduate, okay? That increases your value because you're a native English speaker and you graduate high school. If you went to college and graduated high school, if you have a graduate degree, if you have any experience... All of those things you can add to your portfolio, add to your job offers, and people say, oh, this person's got these experiences, that's why the price is a little bit higher. You know, if you've written an article that appeared in the New York Times or the Huffington Post, or you wrote a best-selling book, well, then your price goes up. That's why my prices are so high. So you start out at the bottom of the hill, but it doesn't take you that long to climb up. You post these ads, and you offer review copies, you offer discount copies, and you'll start to get testimonials. Now, when you've written articles for someone, for review copies or discount copies to start to build up your reputation. You can say, hey, I'll give you a discount or review copy. You have to leave an honest review. And so what you're doing is giving them a discount in exchange for something that's worth more to you. Every single review of one of my Amazon books is worth gold, okay? A single five-star review from someone who's actually read one of my books is worth more than 50 sales to me. It's so much more valuable to me because it drives more sales, it helps to build my business, it helps my reputation. A single positive review can lead to 20 or 30 more sales easily, easily. And then you have tons and tons of reviews, they start to build on each other. When I see a book on Amazon that has two or three reviews, I almost never even look at it. I go, oh, well, 
both of his parents and his best friend left a review, right? That's, that's how you get your three people. So when we see really low numbers, we don't trust them. We need to see numbers above a certain tipping point. So using some of the websites that, that I share with you in the show notes, you start to get these first level of direct clients, right? People that hire you directly for a discount. Now, the people that will grab you for review copies and discount copies, they're not really the clients you want long-term because they can't really afford the full price. That's why they're snapping up anytime someone's doing review copies, but that's okay. Then what you do during this time is you set up your profile on some of those direct websites, okay? Websites like Upwork, websites like Fiverr, and a couple of other ones where people hire writers directly. When someone hires you, off of one of these forums or places where you're doing discount offers, you get them to pay you through one of these other sites and say, hey, I actually want you to pay me using Upwork as the payment processor. What's great about that is when they pay, the money goes into escrow. So you know they've really paid the money, but you don't actually get the money delivered until they're happy with the articles. So that's why I use that service a lot. It protects both the client and the person delivering the content. I've been hired through it before and I hire people through Upwork all the time. I used to use Elance when it was Elance. Now it merged, and so now it's called Upwork. Who knows, maybe the name will change again. So just check the show notes in case they change the name of their website again. What's great about using this escrow system is that you get reviews in a place where you can get really high ticket offers. I was just scanning through the other day, and there were job offers writing short books for $5,000, writing articles for $100. There's actually really high paying high ticket offers. I have a friend who got hired by a major corporation to write a series of articles through this website and they paid him $65,000. So you can get a serious job, right? You do that one job and you're, you probably take the rest of the year off. It's pretty good numbers, right? So there's a lot of amazing opportunities. The hard part about breaking into these types of websites is when you join and you have no portfolio, you have no reviews. No one wants to hire you and give you a chance. Like even when I post an ad and people say, oh, give me a chance. And I go, and they have a portfolio with like one or two articles or they have, they've drawn one or two pictures. No one's ever going to hire you. You have to have a portfolio with 10 to 20 articles on different topics. You have to have reviews. So people go, okay, this guy's written for someone else. I know that he can do the job and deliver on time. So someone finds you on another website. They find you on a forum type website. They pay you through Upwork. They leave you a review on both places. They leave you the same review, but that's great. So now you have, 5, 10, 15 reviews, okay? Use your review copies, using your discount copies. You've used the escrow system. Now, they do take a cut. I can't remember what percentage is, but they will take a cut of your payment. So you're not going to make a lot of money during this phase. You're going to have to write 15 or 20 articles, you know, and make just a little bit of money. You're not going to make nothing, but you'll probably make similar to what you were making at the first place. So maybe you're going to make two cents a word. It's okay, right? You write your 20 articles, and you make three, $400. It's not amazing money, but the reviews are the value. You're getting paid to build your portfolio. You're getting paid now to have reviews. When you have these reviews, you can then start bidding on the higher ticket projects. You no longer have to go out and kind of find your own independent clients. What you can do is, the way these websites work, the way websites or uh, Fiverr or the other way, or Upwork work is people will post jobs and say, hey, this is a job. And you say, yeah, I can do it. Here's the price. Here's how long it will take me. With Fiverr, people kind of just hire you directly. You just have an ad. And again, no one on Fiverr will hire you. Even though it's $5 a little gig, no one's going to hire you for anything until they see a bunch of reviews. No one wants to be the first person to hire you and kind of play that risk game because it's not worth it because most of the people on there that have no reviews have no reviews for a reason. So once you have built up a little bit of a reputation by being strategic, see, I see people, they join Upwork, they post two articles, things they wrote in high school or college, you know, that are not really relevant. They're not blog posts. They're not articles. They're just like school papers or things like that. And they have no reviews and they kind of respond to all these things. They can't understand why no one will hire them. They're always saying, give me a chance. Give me a chance. I can do it. I can do it. And the reason they can't get any jobs is because they haven't treated it like a business. When you approach this like a business and you follow those series of steps I've shared with you, opportunities will begin to arise. Now you can then transition into larger scale projects. I don't write articles. I'll tell you that right now. I don't write blog posts for other people and I don't take article jobs. The way my mind works, I don't really like that. I much would, I would much rather write a 35,000 word book than an 800 word blog post. Now you can make the same kind of money. I'm, you know, you can make the same kind of money per word. But for me, I'm very good at writing long projects. 
to write like 10 little blog posts. It doesn't, it doesn't work the way my mind works. For other people, writing blog posts is much, much easier. You simply want to pay attention to the way your mind works and find the type of projects that work for you. If you want to write articles, you can do a lot of articles, but if you want to move into books like I do, you can easily move into books. Your average book on Amazon right now, the most popular books tend to be around 8,000 words. They're quite short. That's 10 800 word blog posts. It's really the same thing. You just write 10 articles, call them chapter one through 10 instead of article one through 10, put an intro and an outro, you know, a beginning and a conclusion, and you have a book. So it's really not that different. It just happens to be my personal taste. The one thing you do want to avoid is doing one off articles. What I would never accept is a one article job. Once you've written your first 10 or 20 articles for different clients, then you only want to do articles in packs of five, 10 or 20. Because really, you're not going to get that excited doing a job for $20 and then you got to go and find another one. The big hurt for a writer, the big challenge is finding clients. The more time you have to spend finding clients, the harder it is. See, if you have to find one client and they pay you $1,000, well, then you only got to find one client a month. But if it's $20, you have to find 50 clients a month to make the same money. So you want to move into the realm where we're taking higher ticket jobs. So along the way, you want to build out your website. Now, I have extensive step-by-step explanation about how to set up your first website, how to kind of install WordPress, all those different things with tons of screenshots on my website, okay? If you don't know how to set up your first website, do that. You definitely want to have your own domain. You want to be something like amazingwriter.com or jonathanthewriter.com, anything like that. Something that lets people know what you do and you build a website, it has your portfolio on it, shows some of your projects and you want to be very careful what you write so you're proud of everything you work on. One of the things I've discovered Some people have terrible work in their portfolios. If you've written something that's not good, remove it from your portfolio and put something better. When I'm looking to hire writers for small projects, like if I want to hire someone for a small Kindle book that I'm going to put under one of my ghostwriter names, you know, one of those 10,000 word books that I expect them to write in like, you know, seven days or something like that, they'll send me a link to a book that they put on Amazon. Now, I don't mind, I don't mind hiring a writer that's good at writing and sucks at marketing. There's plenty of people that are amazing writers and have no idea how to find an audience on Amazon. That's fine. Okay, that's what I'm really good at. I love to work with people like that. But sometimes the reviews are like, all the words are misspelled. This person doesn't speak English. When I see reviews like that, I just think to myself, why would you point me to that? Why would you point me to something you've written that has terrible reviews and says you're a terrible writer? So be very conscious of what you're doing and the reputation you're building. I work really, really hard on the things I write to try and make it the best quality I can. The amount of quality, the control that went through my Servant of Master book is the most I've ever done. It's the first time I've worked with an outside editor and even after the editor went through the book, I went through again and personally edited it. And then I sent the book out to almost 200 early reviewers to do line by line scans for any mistakes. And I would keep every couple of days I was getting an email with, oh, one word misspelled here or use the word good when you mean the word food, all these tiny, tiny things. Because it's very hard to catch every little grammar mistake when you write a book that's over 400 pages long. Even though I personally scanned the book multiple times, a few things slipped through the cracks. So that dedication to excellence is so important to me because my name's on it. I want it to be the best it can possibly be. I would hate to have a review that says, oh, filled with grammar mistakes or misspelled words and all those things. I would hate that. So you want to take pride in your work and that pride will come across in the type of projects that people bring to you. You don't have to be an amazing writer right now. Now, you might be thinking, hey, all this stuff sounds fun, but I hate working with a typewriter. In that case, there are apps on your phone that will record you talking and convert it to text for free. There's a drag and dictate for phone that does it, and there's a couple of other ones. And it doesn't have to be that long. You can actually become a really, really high-paid article writer using this method. When you speak, on average, you speak about 150 words a minute. So that means in five minutes, you'll speak 750 words. So you could actually bang out an article every five to six minutes. Now, you'll then have to go back through and edit it a little bit to make sure that each word got properly converted, but you can be very quick. I tried using this method. I actually have the full scale drag and dictate on my computer. I'm not great at uh, dictation writing personally because I write so fast. I'm the only person I've ever met who writes as fast as they dictate. Okay, most of the people I work with, they're much faster. And if I'd started using Dragon Dictate three or four years ago, that's what I would be doing. If I started with the dictation method, the problem is that I got so fast at writing. When I was writing my Servant of Master book, at some points I was writing 5,000 words an hour. 
Now, with dictation, you can hit eight or 12,000 words an hour. I can't. There's this type of dictation where you just record in an audio file and then you pay someone to read it and manually add in the periods and the spaces and the punctuation. Uh, it takes a long time and it costs a bunch of money. It costs around a dollar a minute to get that done. And then it takes like a day to get the dictation transferred. So it adds more time and it takes a bunch of money and it doesn't really help me. So I don't like that method. And when you do a really long project uh, and you just record it and use software, well, then it doesn't put any punctuation. So you run into some challenges for longer projects and you can simply learn how to do it. But if you're a slow or a normal speed writer, if you're anything slower than me, then you can dictate while you're looking at the screen on what you're writing and it'll be faster than typing. So there's software for your computer. You got to pay for that. There's no free versions. But on your phone, there's tons of free apps that do the exact same thing. I don't know why they don't make free versions for your computer, but they don't. Macintosh, it does come with a free dictation app. I haven't used it that much because I tried Dag and Dictate, which costs a couple hundred bucks. So I'm not, I'm not doing a hard recommendation on that. I would say start by doing it on your phone. But you can dictate a blog post a day pretty easily. You know, spend five or 10 minutes talking to your phone, clean it up a little bit. And now you've got a blog post every single day. That's how you can start to generate some real money. So you don't have to be amazing at typing to be an amazing writer. Everyone has their different ways of writing. James Patterson, most prolific and most successful author in the world, far more successful than any author you're thinking of right now. Okay? No one is in the same league as him. The guy puts out so many books a year. He writes his books by hand on yellow legal paper. Okay? That's something that I find amazing because I would be so slow with that. But he has this whole system, this whole way of writing books, this whole process. And once you develop your process, lock into it. So find the process that works right for you. Find the system that works right for you and start taking action. Because you're a native English speaker, just by your ability to speak the language you were born with, you can make money online right now writing articles for other people. And if you're stuck in a manual labor type job or a physical labor type job or you're making minimum wage, you can make more money writing for three or four hours than you can working a hard physical job for seven, eight or nine hours. So there's a real opportunity here. And this is one of my favorite ways to make money online because it really lets you express your creativity and there's always work out there. I always have more work in front of me than I can handle. I can tell you right now that I have so many projects that I'm always behind because there's so many opportunities in front of me. So there's always more writing and it's a great way to escape the necessity to go to an office every day or work a job that you don't love. It's one of the quickest and easiest ways to start making money very quickly. To celebrate the launch of the Serve No Master podcast, I'm giving away some epic prizes. You could win an Amazon tap and have me personally turn you into a best-selling author. To win your part of over $20,000 in prizes, go to servenomaster.com backslash contest. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Serve No Master. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another episode. We'll be back tomorrow with more tips and tactics on how to escape that rat race. Head over to servenomaster.com forward slash podcasts now for your chance to win a free copy of Jonathan's bestseller, Serve No Master. All you have to do is leave a five-star review of this podcast. See you tomorrow.